Hello and welcome to another lesson in our series about the Holy Days of Obligation. I'm Shalone Kaysen and this is SD Kaysen Courses. We're going to start as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, is a feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary under the aspect of her motherhood of Jesus Christ, whom she had circumcised on the eighth day after his birth, according to the Levitical law. Christians see Jesus Christ as the Lord and Son of God. It is celebrated by Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, which is the most common ritual family for Catholics. It is celebrated on the 1st of January, which is the eighth day after Christmas, also called the Octave Day. This solemnity is a holy day of obligation in areas that have not abrogated it. And an abrogation just means that the bishops in that country have decided that that holy day doesn't need to be an obligation to go to Mass. And bishops are allowed to choose which of the 10 holy days they're going to celebrate as obligations or not. Christians of Byzantine, West Syriac, and East Syriac rites celebrate Mary as the Mother of God on the 26th of December, which is also known as Synaxis of the Theotokos, while the Coptic Church does so on the 16th of January. The Eastern Orthodox Church, traditional Catholics, Anglicans, Lutherans, they observe the Feast of the Circumcision of Christ on the 1st of January. All right, so what is the significance of this feast day? This feast is a celebration of Mary being the mother of Jesus. The English title Mother of God is a literal translation of the Latin title Mater Dei, which in turn is a rendering of the Greek title Theotokos, meaning bearer of God, and it was dogmatically adopted by the First Council of Ephesus as an assertion of the divinity of Christ. Okay, moving on. What is the history of this feast day? The second Vatican Council stated, quote, clearly from the earliest times, the Blessed Virgin is honored under the title of Mother of God, unquote. And at an early stage, the church in Rome celebrated the 1st of January as a feast that it called the anniversary of the Mother of God. When this was overshadowed by the feast of the Annunciation and the Assumption in the 7th century, the 1st of January began to be celebrated simply as the octave day of Christmas. Octave, of course, meaning eighth. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 21, it talks about how Jesus Christ was circumcised and given his name on the eighth day, the octave of Christmas. In the 13th or 14th centuries, the 1st of January was continuing to be celebrated as a circumcision of the Lord on the octave of Christmas. And then it wasn't until 1960 when the title of the feast circumcision of Jesus began to be simply called the octave of the nativity. All right. So then in, uh, let's see here, it was 1969, the Roman calendar was revised to change the 1st of January back to the solemnity of Mary, Holy Mother of God, and a commemoration of of the most holy name of Jesus. So there was an October 11th feast that was the maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but in certain countries, including Portugal, but that was changed to be the 1st of January. So the whole uh, Roman rite celebrated the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, on the same day, January 1st. However, the October 11th feast is still celebrated by traditional Catholic groups that observe the 1960 calendar because they have permission from the Holy See to celebrate with the older calendar. That day was the 11th of October. However, you will find some traditional groups such as certain fraternity of St. Peter FSSP churches that still celebrate January 1st as a solemnity of Mary. It just depends which uh, Roman calendar, which traditional Roman calendar they use. And what is the reason, the specific reason for this Holy Day of Obligation? Well, we have an apostolic letter, Marialis Cultus, from Pope Paul VI, 
and he says, quote, This celebration placed on the 1st of January is meant to commemorate the part played by Mary in this mystery of salvation. It is meant also to exalt the singular dignity which this mystery brings to the Holy Mother, through, through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life. It is likewise a fitting occasion for renewing adoration of the newborn Prince of Peace, for listening once more to the glad tidings of the angels in Luke chapter 2 verse 14, and for imploring from God, through the Queen of Peace, the supreme gift of peace. And that is the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God in a nutshell. It is a feast day that celebrates the motherhood of the Virgin Mary. It celebrates her as the Theo. Tokos, which is a Greek word meaning bearer of God, which was dogmatically adopted in the year 431. And it is a way to exalt the dignity of the Holy Mother because we received Christ through her womb. And we and it is also a day where we can ask her for the supreme gift of peace, according to Pope Paul the Sixth Apostolic Letter, Marialis Cultus, which you should check out and read sometime. And that's it for today's lesson on the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. Thanks for learning with us. Until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.